That was some timing. Right as I was about to form a new hypothesis, the proof connecting it all suddenly came to me and it was right outside. It had gotten really dark and there were no lights anywhere. The darkness was fear. Unperceived equals unknown equals dangerous equals scary. Leaving this place was dangerous. Dangerous equals scary equals scary equals scary equals scary. Scary things were scary no matter how much logic you applied. But I couldn't discard desire to get to know the fear and conquer it. I opened the door and stopped in place. Night was in absolute darkness. No matter how dark or cloudy it was, the sky always gave me some bit of light to us. However, I came to understand that it could be hard to see even if there was light. Everything I saw was covered by a dense mist. Combined with the pale moonlight, it made the area seem milky. It made it hard to get around. Regardless, I couldn't ignore the scream. There was something beyond this veil. I kept moving forward. Unless my ears were deceiving me, the scream belonged to a woman and had came from the right. I couldn't let myself think that. Or rather, I didn't want to think that. The unknown was scary. Personally, I'd find that principle made my life really easy. I had more than enough fear from those which were directly threatening my life. I really didn't want to have the fear of losing someone as well. Change your line of thought. Haruki. Solving the mystery might save someone two birds with one stone. I began walking faster. <laughs> And at the scream, it was close. I realized I had to find a way to protect myself. I was unarmed, so I looked around for anything and I could use as a weapon. I felt around to see if there were any branches or anything. Sadly, all I felt was grass. I went deeper and searched the ground itself. Soon, I felt something hard. It was a rock. A moment of digging later, I took it in my hand. It was a bit smaller than my hand. I almost teared up at how useless it seemed. It was better than nothing. I looked at the base of my feet and saw the grassy ground. I could easily move forward if I first checked the ground using my feet. Since I might have been close to danger, I had to focus on what was ahead too. I'd recognize the danger and if possible get rid of it. I concentrated entirely on that and stepped forward. I couldn't hear the screams anymore, but I could hear other things. A wet sound, the sound of something crackling. It filled my mind with countless things I didn't want to imagine. Even so, I kept walking forward, forward, until I saw it. Oh, my hypothesis were nothing but delusions. The truth was truly something you had to see yourself. But, but why? Why was this thing so scary in spite of being true? It, was, it wasn't supposed to exist. It couldn't exist. After all, it was a wolf with humanoid body. Like a werewolf. There were no such things as werewolves. The next morning, in a paddy filled in Fuji Yoshi Yasumi Su third block someone discovered a thorough mangled corpse the clothes nearby led the discoverers to exclude it was the traveler Harazaki Fusushi he's still moving strangely enough I could perceive this moment so I goodbye. I was finished off by the girl. The last thing I heard. I hang the wolf was that.
Uh, werewolf and Resurrection. You can view it in the key list. The route unlocked by this is represented by the same number on the scenario chart. Oh, and I, uh, I get the bad ending. Yes, I want to watch the hit corner. Yo, やっちまったな、大将。最初春は木とかいうやろうには見えねえから、まあ安心して靴ろぎな。つっても、あんま長っちりはできねえかな。ヒント講談にふさわしく、大将が困らねえようにありがてえ助言をいくつかくれてやる
but what if I didn't know about me and was just weirded out by this randomly locked toilet? What if I didn't show a hint of fear to what it was doing? It would just leave. I chose to just wait and see. Once again, someone pulled the door, shaking the structure as a whole. I gulped a scream and focused on the lock. If it broke, it'd be over for me. Over as in, I'd be dead. That was what the memory told me. I was powerless back then, and even more so now. Assuming I'd tried to fight back, what would work? I heard that teeth were the hardest part of the human body, so maybe I could bite it? Yeah, I'd tear whatever it was apart with my teeth. I'll bite it to death. I gathered my wits and killing intent, grinding my teeth. I glared at the door. How long had it been? The sound suddenly stopped. For all I knew, it might have been a ploy to make me drop my guard. I slowly counted the 500. If nothing happened in that time, I assume it went away. There was no screams or attacks after that. But the silence around improved my perception and I heard strange noises every now and then. Breathing, growling, claws on the ground. Basically I felt a beastly presence. So that thing actually existed here. Was it what the mist brought here? The wolf is coming? Did they know all about this? Shit, I couldn't learn anything in a place like this. And not knowing things scared me. Trusting my persistence or deja vu or whatever it was, I chose to just stay quiet and wait. I figure out everything tomorrow. I just had to make it through the night and then talk to Chimi. Now everything, okay. If it was something I couldn't solve, I'd just run away. Thankfully, my bike repairs were going well. But I'd be leaving even if it didn't work. I'd walk to Kimi Fujiyoshi if I had to. Unlike Yasumi Zu, they might have had a reliable means of transport. For now, I just had to stay awake, make it through the night. I never liked seeing things. As the night gradually turned brighter as the morning arrives, it almost made me feel like shit, like I'd done something harmful, both for my body as a human being in general. I found it natural to spend the night asleep and welcome the morning well rested with a smile. I never expected to feel so much gratitude for the morning light leaking through the door of an outhouse. It felt like the beast and had been out but the whole night, naturally, the high humidity here made my clothes all wet and sticky. It was unpleasant, but even trying to move them makes it more comfortable for myself felt like a matter of life and death. Maybe it was a good thing I couldn't relax, but hell, it was exhausting in more ways than one. When I heard Chimi shout, Haruki, in the distance, I was so overcome with relief fell to my knees and that in mind I opened the door I expected to see the same picture it village I'd seen yesterday so what I actually saw pretty uh, shocked me pretty hard what the hell was up with this thick mess I couldn't see sh it was just like the entire area was consumed by it did someone Line every inch of this place with dry ice or something? I could hear Chimi, but not see her. Chimi, Chan, I'm right here. I heard a wet sound and finally saw a silhouette within the mist. Are you okay? I walked up and saw exactly what I expected, a girl struggling to free one of her legs stuck deep in the paddy field. I see, well, good luck. 
Oh, you can't do it yourself? Take my hand then, and I'll let go. I tucked her hand, embraced my leg. That was enough to help her. She lost her balance and... Whoa, safe. Despite how close we were now, this wasn't the least bit romantic. I definitely remember a time where I was far from alright though. Yeah, I guess I am. I had no idea what that was about, so I didn't see any reason to mention it. I did feel like there was some beast outside. Chimi's expression immediately darkened. She clearly knew what I was referring to. I have lots of questions, but right now I'm more interested in the screaming I heard than anything else. Huh? You know what I mean? She fell silent, clearly uncomfortable. Chimi gave me her hand. I took it, but I feel the least bit excited about this. She led me down the path to the school dorm. Oh, Fusashi-san, you're okay. Thanks, warm futon man. You're okay too. Uh huh. Wait, where's Haru-chan? Did she, she? She's fine. She suffered quite a shock, so she's taking a while to get the dress. I see. So the rest of you have already gotten a move. Um, As if I could, I had no idea when I could get out, so I just waited until I heard Timmy's voice. Huh? You are awake? Yasanaga kun made it sound like it, that was weird. You try slipping in there, guy, you can't even sit in there, much less lie down. No, that's not what I I see. I really hate it when people just trail off like that. It makes me way too curious. Why are you here anyway? I'll look out. Scene. So someone actually... Moochie? Don't mess around like that. Yeah, I do. The invisible and unknown were way scarier than anything else. Not to mention, I could already smell something foul. I lightly moved them aside and walked up to the so-called scene. There was a corpse. It was, a, it was such a horrible state, it was hard to recognize it as a human. Imagine that was... You would have gotten if you overturned a burger's cart. That's how thoroughly the victim was disassembled. Also, the butcher would have had to deal with the entrails. Enough of that comparison. Standing my eyes to look through the thick mess, I could actually make out some human parts. Hands, torn, clothing, hair, a shoulder bag. How professional. She cut hold of her interviewing tools even while running her life. Despite the body state, it wasn't hard to tell the victim was Hi Sako My Mia. That thing, did it come to me once it was done? This is all. Chimi was standing a short distance away, looking at nothing in particular. Got nothing to, nothing to puke, or well, I'm used to this. Um, well, I guess you can say that. When asked if they study medicine, I guess you can say that is what students from similar departments say to make themselves look good, but I did see a few pathological analyses. I 
crouched down and put my hands together. Then grimacing at the howling reek of blood, innards, and especially digestive food, I brought my face closer. Perhaps I could learn something from this. I could even, if it wasn't much, this corpse wasn't split into pieces. The limbs were still connected and folded in an unnatural way. They were, e they were either crushed or bent with no regard to bones or muscle uh, position. Then her whole body had been torn. The innards were particularly badly damaged. The words wolf down felt like the best way to be uh to put it i found it hard to describe this wasn't my job so there wasn't much i could tell about it this is way beyond anything i've ever seen before i had the urge to add that this seemed inhuman but i kept myself from saying that in a way we should call the police. Leave it to the pros. I said something any good citizen would, but for some reason they didn't seem to agree. Why wouldn't they? I mean, someone died. Then let's evacuate. Why? We have my bike in their van. Anyways, with Fusashi-san, we now have all the survivors, so let's go to the dining hall. We'll wait for Haru-chan. Can I get an explanation? It was the first time Jimmy had acted so harsh with me. I was pretty irritated myself, but it must have been worse for them. They actually had info on what was happening here. Sorry, that was insensitive of me. Jimmy said nothing more and just silently walked off. I followed her after her. When we reached the plaza, I instantly understood what she said about evacuating. The bike and the van were completely destroyed. The ladder was in particularly bad state. The front window was broken. All four tires were flat, etc. My bike was on this, its side. Its front fork was broken. Well, it was basically scrap metal now. There was a rock right next to it. Guess we had our weapon. And there were more remains inside the van. It looks like the enormous mountain. I didn't know about Yuda Hishimoto-shi, I'd assume there were two or three here. Chimi slowly nodded. I now knew we'd lost not only two lives, but any means of transportation as well. She pointed at a wooden electrical pole. The line was dangling. I took out my own phone. It worked, but the battery was almost dead, and like before, it was out of range. The situation had become even harsher than before. Jimmy walked a few steps away. I followed out there. There was a large boulder. It was tall enough to reach an average roof, and there were drawings on it. A crimson symbol of sort. What did it represent? At first, it looked like an incoherent mess of lines. However, I soon realized there was a pattern. It felt like the calling card of some street gang. From what I could tell, the basis was a warped diamond shape with a spiral inside. There were two of them. They seemed to be drawn in blood, but there wasn't nearly as describing, disturbing as the bizarre shape. Chimi had made a quiet de declaration. 
quite the declaration. Apparently, the settlement had been invaded by something malicious, and it was intelligent enough to rid it of all means of ex escape and contact. I could understand that much, but it didn't make sense to me. This wasn't some isolated island. There was a cliff, and sure, but you could still go down to Saranaga or go to Kimushi Fuji. I'd ask about the next time I had the chance. Hmm? Don't worry about it. I'm just an outsider. Oh, poor choice of words on my point. I mean, I'm an outsider who doesn't know the rules, so I'll just silently watch for the time being. I'm tired, and I think I'm less shaken by this than most people, so I figured it'd be best for me to stay cool. I imagine even the elders here are more bothered by this. Um, what else could I be? Hmm. My lives are pretty messed up, I guess. The small dining hall was jam-packed with people. Timmy. He survived. Good morning, though I guess it's not very good, considering what's going on. Oh, it's okay. You did it, didn't you? The younger Aubrey boy menaced me. No, I didn't. Why would you think I'd think that? Shut it. Where the hell do you get off stuttering like that? Stop it, Yoshibo. You're the one who needs to shut it. You're the one who said this... Shaddy. Man, I hadn't expected to be treated this badly. I'm saying this ain't a matter for a brat like you, and you're bothering Kori-san, right? It's fine, we'll talk it out. それ that was the woman. So she wasn't just an illusion. Blank was her name, huh? I thought our eyes met for a second, but she just walked by me. That girl was here too. Deeper in, there was Kiyonosuke no Satoshi, clearly irritated by something. And not too far away, there was the old man who cried wolf, just like yesterday. It was hard to tell that he was like, thinking, let alone thinking. They were the only one sitting by the way. The others were all idly standing around. Mom, everybody, we're back. The three students were here, and with them the settlement entire population had gathered. As for the outsiders, the journalists were dead, while I and the mysterious girl had survived. I didn't know the circumstances, but they probably had their reasons to be suspicious of me. Suddenly, Chimi had uh, did something unexpected. She stopped the girl who was about to go out to get some key. Each villager seemed to color differently, so I didn't know what to color myself. Oh, hello. 
回るに末で植松珍しいでしょ上藤吉の長者植松家の玄当主様植松理香子と申しますお見知りを聞くださいそしゅうざかロコスレブリハンアイキロノスケシーノッソトスファミリーナマイガワカナイカラソヨンデレダケダケドメイハローデアンナスミユ The girl they called Meiko trembled a bit and Whoa. So, what you just want to say, Chimi? What does she want? Fusaisi Haruaki san o Utageni Yobanai koto te an shimas. So, what you want to say, Chimi? What does she want? Fusaisi Haruaki san o Utageni Yobanai koto te an shimas. I felt a wave of perplexion go through the room. Kate Tinjane. The feast is there to help us decide if he's shady or not, right? Their expressions were stern and their words were harsh. What the hell are you talking about? He's the shadiest of us all. Huh? Y yeah, I did. How was I supposed to react? No one else was raising their hand, but I had no idea what they were talking about. Me, probably. I don't even know what. The intros. Oh, Kami sama? As in Wolf sama? Why the re ver verdants and what was she even talking about? Sarana ga kara kita hito de wa aru kedo. Kare wa hontoun ni tada tori what was I supposed to do? Misogi, Mono Imi, Yume Makura. I didn't, then I was in the outside house by myself, but that's it. I didn't bathe and spent the night awake. The place got all noisy. They probably didn't expect the answer. Tae-san sounded genuinely puzzled. I had no idea what kind of dynamics were at work here, but Chimi asked for Rikako. Umatsu's opinion. Watakshimo Sanse Shinai Mujinga Sabakarena in Nara Kono Katawa Yamano Kitenora Chigaini Orareru no de Show. So you koto des Chimi, you know what you're doing, right? If we remove him, Taisetna Utage Itinichibu. Old man, what you think? It was roundabout, but in the end, once again, the one to make final call was Konzo Makashima. Old man. Glaring directly at me, the old man walked through the gathering and approached me. Seeing him up from uh, from up close, I realized just how big and burly he was. It was pretty typical of someone living in a place like this, but it felt out of place for someone his age. 
His expression displayed both an inner strength to match his physique, a profound rage. He spoke slowly yet decisively. This was uncomfortable. Hold on. If he can be excluded, I would like the same to happen to Rikako-san. I... Huh? Why? We're from Kamifujiyoshi. We have no reason to play along with Saranaga's business. Nosato-sama, so wa ikimasen. Utage no hi ni idea. Nosato mo, uematsu mo, miguruma mo, higuchi mo. You are both disinherited. That's different. Why must people that are still part of the four families take part of this idiocy? Listen here, Kyo. Don't call me that, Moro. Let go. Let's go, Rika Go san. We have no reason to play with these peasants. Iye. Kiyonosuke, she eventually fell, uh, fell silent and Rikako left. She returned in no time and everyone began leaving. All right, where to then? Takumi, Okunori, Skyruka. Well, yeah, all right, I'll take him. Come with me. Everyone went to some hall near the village plaza, where Takumi led me somewhere else. We made our way through the tall grass between the buildings. At a dead end, next to the wild trees in a rocky cliff, there was a large cage. It even had a roof. It would have passed for a hut with a bit of work. This is where we keep the live game we capture. Sorry, but you'll have to wait here. I can't say no, can I? Don't take it the wrong way, okay? You'll be out once we're done with the feast. It won't take long. I can't get any details, huh? Yeah, I do feel bad about this, but you should be thankful you don't need to take part in the feast. How was I supposed to feel that way if I didn't even know what the feast was? I'd have asked if he looked pretty irritated, probably because he wanted to get it over with. So I kept my mouth shut. The floor of the cage was mostly gravel, with spaces of wheat and other things. There was a vague but very clear scent of the beast. Can I lay down here? I figure I should sleep whenever I can. Man, you're brash. No, just a coward. I don't want to die is all. That was why I'd abandoned these people. After Tom McKee's son locked me in and left, I laid down and closed my eyes. <laughs> the ground was hard and it raged pretty bad, but I was still an improvement over the outhouse. I should have taken the time to think about the villagers that had said about my strange memories <sighs> and about how I could get the hell out of here. That was what I wanted to do, but I knew... I'd just be swept away by an unproductive spiral of regret if I went down that rabbit hole. 
Had I always been this admirable of a person? Another thing. For some reason, I felt like I'd spend the entirety of this time just watching the battle. So I decided I'd focus on resting. And I think right here, before the feast happens, is where we should stop. Well, like always, like, comment, subscribe, you know, do the thing. Happy spooky months. Woo.